Ashwin, it's a pleasure, dear colleagues, to give to share my know-how on the small aperture IOL, which is already known for many decades uh, in the history, uh, the benefit, and it was especially true uh, if we look at experimental results that uh, so many trials and, and experiments, etc., have shown that uh, the small aperture uh, the broadens the peak, so to say, of good visual acuity, decreases depth of focus, especially for slight myopic eyes more than hyperopic eyes. And um, if, of course, there is the uh, Agarwal suggestion, which we'll hear later on, of um, pupilloplastic, which works extremely well in these odd eyes. Uh, but we also know this technology as corneal inlays and did uh, um, uh, trials on the inlay camera um, beforehand, also in cataract eyes with good results, by the way, which was astonishing to us because we didn't expect that to that extent. Uh, and there is um, the device that's called the IC8 IOL, which um, offers um, an opening of 1.36 millimeter aperture and has a um, mask in the hydrophobic acrylic IOL of a 3.23 millimeter diameter. And we prospectively uh, implanted this device into the non-dominant eye um, and in the other eye, a monofocal IOL. And the results were extremely good. Um, patient satisfaction was high. And also even with binocular visual acuity with mesopic without glare or with glare, uh, it was a normal, um, uh, were normal results. We also compared on a prospective randomized fashion, um, the IC8 implantation versus the Symphony. And, um, and interestingly, the IC8 performed similarly to the Symphony, slightly better in terms of visual acuity and definitely better in terms of photic phenomena, like in this case, halos, for example. And um, also the question of course arises, if you implant the left eye, for example, it's not the non, if it's not the non-dominating eye into one eye and the patient is so happy, can I implant this device also in the second eye? Because usually you would say it's only for one eye, but you can. And if you, you as we did and published that, uh, you see that you even boost the depth of focus for these patients uh, uh, to a greater amount. Here are, here's the defocus curve and see how broadened it is by bilateral implantation. And also interesting, of course, like um, Bobby Ang um, published that uh, this, it's, the lens is not only robust against um, deviation from target refraction, namely one and a half diameter diopters will not be recognized by the patient, but also for in terms of astigmatism, it is working extremely well up to 1.25 diopters. That is the cutting edge, so to say. Then there is a slight decrease stepwise uh, in terms of the visual acuity. And also, especially, I think this lens technology is favorably for uh, post-refractive eyes. For example, the greater number that's increasing over the next years after PRK and LASIK. And we also had uh, good results in this case because it's so forgiving, this lens, and uh, still giving uh, the um, potential of decreasing aberrations and deviation from target refraction. As we all know, the biometry is difficult in these eyes. And of course, this lens produces um, less problems. But it's also interesting for post-RK or for example, for inlays or in the right upside um, um, uh, picture, you see a traumatic eye with iris trauma, for example, where Ashwin, of course, and Ama uh, Agawa will uh, suture the, the iris. But if you're not that talented in, in surgery like they are, uh, it's easy to implant the lens because you don't have to do anything else. So that's also, and we have for the very odd eyes, we have the extra focus. This is a lens that has no optic that in terms of power, but it's only a blend, but it's implanted into the sulcus on top of the pseudophacus and can also help you get rid of uh, problems in this regards. I have no financial interest in this implant, but for very 
rare eyes, it is of help, definitely. The interesting thing through this IOL, you can do aberrometry, you can do a fundoscopy, or optos um, diagnosis. You can also do retina surgery, which I did several uh, times already through this lens and through the periphery for um, well-experienced surgeon, I would say it's not a big problem. The only issue is that uh, depends also, of, your, of course, on your visualization system in vitro retina surgery. Uh, what is more difficult is membrane peeling in the center. Yeah, but it is doable for an experienced surgeon. Then having a look into the future, the company Roviak, which uh, is a German company from, from Holger Lubachowski in Hannover, we are doing currently trials and lasering individual blends into the natural lens because we know with the femtosecond laser, we are not inducing cataracts, yeah, but we can block light. And that is what we did in human eyes in, 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 with clear lenses currently. We are doing this on a prospective fashion with different uh, university centers in Germany currently with eye tracking, etc., and the exact decentration, individual size of the uh, corneal of the lenticular aperture, and I'm, I'm not able to share the results, but you can see here the lasing um, of a human um, eye that can see very well. And also interesting, the same company comes with another approach, and that is that they detected that it's possible to laser into a normal eye that is clear usually, these, this kind of blend after implantation. So in the line of sight, and with an individual aperture diameter and a mass diameter that can also be individualized with a femtosecond laser. And I would say our estimation of the implanted lenses worldwide, um, more than 80% of all existing IOLs would be doable and feasible for this technology. So this is also interesting as well as other approaches that come up uh, by, by smaller companies now. Um, um, we don't have the time to mention that, but the optical principle in this issue, if you implant it in the non-dominant eye, is so striking that it's definitely um, uh, an old proven principle with new applications. And um, I mean, you can eradicate deviations from tablature refractions, as I said, irregularities and astigmatism. The uncorrected distance visual acuity is very good. It's superior to many other th options. And also intermediate and near visual acuity is good. It's not comparable to a trifocal lens if you uh, have a monolateral implantation, but it's, it's good, definitely. And um, enhanced depth of focus is reliably improved with good quality of vision, minimal symptoms and high patient satisfaction. And the new options I'm hoping to um, um, report on that next year at this meeting. And so thank you uh, a lot for giving me the chance to sharing my, my impressions and my, my uh, know-how here and listening to me. Thank you so much.